Hello everybody, so here is Black Angel again and I'm here with a very quick video about a topic that I have been figuring out recently, which is uh, lack of introverted thinking. So what do the types that do not have introverted thinking look like? Um, I'm not talking about um, uh, ESCJs or ISCJs or ENTJs or INTJs here because... Uh, um, if you know a little bit of neuroscience uh, or you know a little bit of uh, uh, socionics, you will realize that whenever a person has one of the thinking functions strong, they're also very capable of using the other thinking function very well. Uh, they either ignore it or consider it stupid to use or whatever the case may be, uh, but on a general basis, uh, they are going to be able to use it, and to some extent, they will make use of it. Uh, so the types that actually lack introverted thinking would be the EXFJs, so ESFJs and ENFJs, and uh, the EXFPs, so the ENFPs and the ESFPs. So in this video specifically, I'm going to talk about uh, ESFPs and ENFPs because what concerns ENFJs and ESFJs, they are extremely inclined to following other people's logic. So yeah, I think in this specific case, we're talking about understanding. So if someone explains an ESFJ or an ENFJ, uh, an ENFJ, their understanding of something, the ENFJ or, and the ESFJ are going to grasp on that and follow the logic. They, they are naturally inclined to do that. So an ESFJ and an ENFJ will never oppose to your logic, another logic, unless they already, in, in, they, they already gathered that from other and previous experiences and they need that to, to live their lives. Uh, but they are normally going to understand your reasoning and follow your reasoning. What concerns the INFJs and the ISFJs, uh, that's a whole different story. They live by the concept of understanding. That's their uh, only kind of logic. So when we're talking about understanding here, we are actually talking about what is normally called common sense. So when we talk about common sense, it's uh, those sets of rules now that, um, yeah, sorry, I was making a little bit of confusion. Anyway, yeah, uh, it's common sense. And common sense is that thing that uh, makes you come to a conclusion according to everyday experience and everyday life. So to better explain it, I'm going to borrow from the net. Uh, there is a video going around the net that is quite hilarious for a lot of people and I admit being one of those that finds it funny, uh, even though I can see and understand the struggle, the struggle of the girl being recorded. Uh, not because I share it, but because I see what is going on there. And there, this girl is uh, either an ESFP or an ENFP. Looking at her appearance, I would go for ESFP, but there isn't enough data to see her dominant function because she's being struck on what Socionics considers the vulnerable function. So she's being asked about a common sense topic and she's failing big time and she's growing nervous. That's, that's what, you, what you see when you're striking someone's vulnerable function, so someone's biggest vulnerability. And for ESFPs and ENFPs, we're talking about introverted thinking, so understanding and common sense. Uh, common sense and public opinion are two fully different things. Uh, look it up in the dictionary if you want, uh, but you would need to consider it from uh, uh, the psychology, psychology definition. So I was going plus, to, to say psychological point of view, but that's actually wrong. Uh, so what you need to consider is actually the definition in psychology of these, these two things. So that's what we rely on when we're talking about MBTI and socionics. And also anagram. Uh, you have to consider that these theories are not living, in the, living up in the sky and, not, uh, and coming out of nowhere, but they are based on psychology and on psy studies in psychology. So what does in this video happen? Back to our main topic. 
this girl is asking a question. You, you probably have seen that and laughed like crazy, so you will understand immediately what I'm talking about, but I'm going to tell the story for those who didn't cross this video. So this girl is asked, uh, you're going to um, pizzeria, and uh, you can order pizza, and you're going to get yourself the giant pizza. Uh, is it something you would do? And she says, yes, of, of course I would. And then the guy asks her, uh, so what kind of pizza are you going to take to get? And she says, I'm a weigh-in. So then the guy asks her, uh, the guy of the pizzeria tells you that the pizza can be sliced in either in eight pieces or 12 pieces. How many pieces would you get and why? And the girl's answer is, I would get eight pieces because I wouldn't be able to eat 12. So the guy goes like, okay, that doesn't make much sense because the pizza is always the same pizza. So you have a pizza and you're going to, to slice the pizza either in eight or 12 pieces. So it's the same pizza, but it's the different number of pieces in, of the same pizza. And she goes like, yeah, understood, I got that. But I'm going to take eight pieces because I wouldn't be able to eat the, the, the four more pieces to get to 12. So I, I can only eat eight pieces. So I wouldn't get the pizza sliced in, in 12 pieces because I, I would only eat eight pieces. So that's lack of introverted thinking. That's lack of common sense. Uh, that's when someone isn't able uh, to add up. So... Common sense would tell you it's the same pizza as the guy was trying to explain this girl. Uh, common sense tells you that the pizza is always the same, so it doesn't matter if it's 8 pieces or 12 pieces, it's just a matter of how you enjoy it better. Um, but for someone that doesn't use common sense at all, that kind of reasoning is alien. So if you ask them how many pieces, they're going to make pieces into a quantity. And if you increase the quantity, the quantity you, you, you automatically increase the, 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 the size of the thing psychologically. So that's lack of common sense. So in this case, this is pretty extreme. It's not like every ESFP and every ENFP is that extreme in their lack of common sense. But you're going to figure that out pretty quickly, that they are TI vulnerables, and you're going to see it pre pretty quickly that they lack that kind of understanding. Uh, one example that I have from real life uh, from uh, an ESFP that uh, doesn't show uh, that weak TI so, so often uh, is that this person doesn't understand what a psychiatric illness is. Uh, so whenever um, he's in touch with, the, with this uh, um, schizophrenic guy and uh, it's a man and he's in touch with this schizophrenic guy and every time you tell this person the guy is schizophrenic you cannot ask of him to think the way you do or to understand a lot of your reasonings because it's going to be blocked by his paranoia and a lot of other things that's that are going on in his head and he's not going to follow you the answer you're going to get from the ESFP is, what the fuck, is he crazy or something? And then I, if you answer, yes, the guy's crazy, he's going to say, well, he's normal just like me and he, he's got to understand that. So that's a limitation of introverted thinking. The introverted thinker sees, uh, the, introverted thinker sees the differences um, of uh, intelligence, of quality of understanding, of uh, everything that is going on in matters of understanding and common sense. Whereas the people that lack introverted thinking are going to have some limitations in the way of thinking about, uh, about certain things. Like, for example, um, uh, that thing of understanding when someone has a psychiatric il illness and they're not able to understand you the, the way another person would. Uh, another thing in which they're going to have this difficulties is categorizing in general. Uh, so common sense categorizing, for example, uh, we're talking, I'm talking with uh, my mother and there's this person there with us and we are telling each other stories of my cat 
um, where my cat is, uh, well, my, my, my cat specifically uh, has a soft spot for perfumes, uh, so for scents, perfumes. Uh, like if you get, get him a Dolce & Gabbana perfume, he's going to go crazy and start smelling the hair and stuff like that. So we were talking, it, we were talking about this thing and we were telling each other anecdotes uh, about uh, my cat and his relationship to scents. And this other person jumps in and starts telling an anecdote of his cat uh, that in another situation did something that has nothing to do with scent. So um, they're able to grasp that there's something going on talking about a cat or cats, uh, and but even following the conversation, they will not keep into account that the category of anecdotes being told is perfumes. So they're not going to grasp that specific nuance. And they're often off topic for that reason. So if you go on a forum and you see some people that are never on topic or very rarely on topic, unless it's something that they accidentally uh, are particularly interested in and they hop in the conversation on topic, uh, then on a general basis, they are very often on off topic and if you tell them you're off topic because the the topic here is something different they're going to get pissed and feel hurt and they're going to be very hurt so please don't do that um because they do not understand that they're not following the conversation the way other people are and it's actually something that i can that i consider extremely painful or that should be extremely painful because um, an introverted thinking dominant will automatically jump in and say something about that, which is something that would help me, for example, uh, because I would feel extremely uncomfortable knowing that I'm off topic because I would consider it as interrupting someone else's conversation. So if there is an introverted thinking dominant there that keeps me updated about the topic, it's less stress for me to follow the conversation. Uh, for ENFJs, that's actually necessary, for example. Uh, but anyway, the introvert thinker is going to tell you and to keep you update about what is going on. So if you enter a conversation and there's an introvert thinker there, he's going to stop you before you start talking and he's going to tell you the conversation is about cats and, and their relationship to per perfumes. So if you have an anecdotes about that, we would be very interested hearing that. That would be an ISFP, for example, an ISTP, sorry, for example. An ISTP would tell you that in, a, in an extremely kind and even a naturally kind way. If you want to think about a standard or a very um, stereotypical ISTP, I invite you to watch the series uh, Sleepy Hollow. The series Sleepy Hollow. Ichabod Crane is an ISTP. Um, so that's the kind of kindness that they have. Uh, other, uh, it, it looks like they come from another time. So that's what a, an ISTP would do, for example. And a, an, ES, an ESTJ or an INTJ wouldn't mind following different topics or this person jumping in and talking about something different. They would just follow both conversation and keep up with uh, both sides. Uh, without uh, actually stressing about it or even giving it too much importance. Uh, they actually would consider, I think an, INT, an INTJ would consider it a switch um, in a mood uh, that he may consider actually enjoyable. Uh, someone jumping in and starting a different conversation within the conversation so that there's like three conversations going on with three different people and there's a four, room, four people in the room and their fourth person is answering the conversations that he wants to answer. That's typical of TI, demonstrative, for, uh, for instance. INTJs and IS, ISTJs um, rock at that thing, uh, which instead uh, makes uh, ISTPs and INTPs um, uh, weirded out and uncomfortable. Uh, they don't like that. They, they're very, very... Um, I don't know how to say that in English, but they are... They, they they work in blocks, so they're, they're basically, this slot is made this way, and this slot is made this way, so we're going to follow this slot, and we're talking about that other slot later on, <laughs> so that's how they work, um, so yeah, 
uh, for ESTPs and ENTPs, the thing is quite different because they enjoy disrupting and destroying uh, slots to build new ones. So it's quite difficult to explain, actually. Um, but it has a lot to do with um, uh, making the whole conversation revolving about one to around one topic uh, look like the topic doesn't exist and then turn it into something else. Uh, I've seen that uh, from my um, professor of anthropology, for example, if you start a conversation with him and you're trying to pay attention to follow exactly your little slot and follow your common sense reasoning, he's going to follow you for a while and then you start seeing this weird smile, this weird evil smile that Ops out, jumps out on his face and then he starts taking everything you say and revolving it against you in some way and to see if you can hold your stand your ground and at some point everything you're saying doesn't make sense anymore and you have to recollect your thoughts and oh my god we're talking about something else what the fuck happened <laughs> that's basically how it happens and he's got a lot he has a lot of fun about that and it's like they reorganize uh, other people's thoughts. They're able to help reorganize your thoughts. If they see that the kind of, uh, the kind of thought, the, of trail of thoughts you're following um, is not um, going to help you in any way, they're going to help you reorganize your so thoughts so you suddenly find yourself following another trail of thought and thoughts and you don't know even why. Um, I cannot take a, another example because uh, what I have, the other things I have are very private and very personal. So I would rather leave that out of these uh, videos. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one example will, will be okay. Anyway, lack of introverted thinking is a lack of basic common sense. So, so if you want to spot the ESFPs and the ENFPs out there, keep into account that the main difference between the ESFP and the ENFP is that uh, the ESFP is a little bit more down to earth, uh, a little bit more uh, funny and fun oriented in some way. They're considered walking parties uh, because they enjoy amusement. They're very loud. They're they're going to talk about a lot of different topics, but uh, on a very superficial and very enjoyable way. That that is not particularly deep in any way, whereas the ENFP is going to have some depth. Uh, they have an intellectual kind of depth. Uh, so they're not going to use common sense either, but at the same time, they are going to have some kind of an, in, uh, an intellectual streak to them. Uh, I, I've known ENF, I've, I've met ENFPs studying neuroscience, for example. That's a very scientific and very... Um, data and facts uh, oriented thing which is something that uh, t lack of ti um, can rely on uh, yeah people that lack ti normally rely like esfps and enfps and in this sense a lot of INF, uh, also infps and isfps these kind of people relies a lot on facts um, that are provided uh, externally. So they're going to rely on the data and the facts that they are provided. If you have a discussion with an ESFP or an ENFP uh, about uh, racism, for example, <clears throat> they're going to bring up a lot of statistic, of statistics and tell you uh, a lot of research is done on the, on the topic and something that they have read in that uh, art, uh, art, article of the newspaper or that specific scientific research uh, thing, um, they're going to bring a lot of facts, but they're never going to give you their personal opinion on the topic. Um, that is something to consider about them. Uh, on the other hand, and if you go through my videos, I think you can notice that uh, weak TI can give you a lot of anecdotes from personal life. So that's, uh, that's weak TI with lack of TE. So there's uh, very little or even marginal um, facts and data coming from researches, statistics and stuff like that. And a lot of common sense, a lot of uh, tales from everyday life uh, a lot of stories uh, that makes you understand rather than see the fact. 
Uh, so that's why my videos are very appreciated because I talk a lot about things from everyday life, people's behavior of people that I met, that I meet in, le in real life or that I met once in real life and did that thing. And then I saw it in another 20 or 30 people or even more. Um, now, before I close this video, I wanted to make it quick, but it went longer. <laughs> anyway, before I close this video, this is a piece of information for those uh, who got to the end of it. I've read somewhere from old topics of uh, bullism about me. I was having fun reading that stuff one evening, and the fun part was that I was having fun having, reading it. I wasn't hurt at all. Anyway, some of these people uh, said, "Oh, uh, she's not reliable because you don't know how many people, how, how many ENFJs she's talking about. If she's talking about one or two or or more." I'm not talking about one or two people here when I'm describing describing types, and that's why it works. It works because uh, I have been working for the United Nations, and I have been working as an interpreter, and I have been working in restaurants as a waitress when I was uh, studying. I have met thousands, bazillions of people, and I have strong memory of each person I cross in my life. And therefore, I remember anecdotes and temperament stuff from every person. I may not recognize them physically, but the moment they speak, I know who that person is and how many times I met them and what I did, what they did and how I, how they behaved and what their, my relationship to them was. And that, that's how I am. Um... Every person, every single person that contacts me, even if they contacted me the last time four, four years ago or three years ago, I'm going to recognize them. Uh, one of my customers, um, uh, he contacted me and didn't say anything. And I'm like, you've been following me for four years. I'm going to give that importance because I know who is following me for four, who has been following me for four years. And so consider the number of people I could have met online with going through a personality cafe that I quit because that's so bullshit in my opinion. Uh, personality cafe, MBDI uh, forums on Facebook and all the forums I've been that do not, do not talk about uh, psychology or anything of that sort. Um, I've met bazillions of people and I remember a lot of them and my mind is basically um, a data storage of uh, all the behaviors of these people and the reason they had, the, the intentions they had and the reasons why they behaved that way. Uh, so basically, whenever I read a sentence uh, in, uh, in Vic on Wikisoshan, for example, about one function, what my mind starts doing is gathering examples to add up and understand that specific thing. So I gather like a hundred or two hundred examples of that thing. I see, I see the differences among them, and then I pick that one example that actually explains that the way all the others also make sense. So that's how I understand things in my mind and how many examples I have at hand. Um, this was just a piece of information because I considered that uh, um, comeback or that retort of that person actually at least partial intelligent. I mean, we're talking about observation here and not science, so the number of examples I'm bringing doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm not observing one person. I'm observing uh, thousands of people I crossed through my life uh, and I'm taping, keeping them all into account. So, yeah. I think I will close this here and I will talk to you soon.